Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh, working as an assistant professor with Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the session 20 of the course Professional Communication for Managers. And session 20 is going to be on crisis communication. Yes, till this session, I have focused upon that how communication needs to be in the corporate world, what are the various verbal, non-verbal ways, different channels I focused upon, how you need to go on for building your resume and you will be going for cracking an interview and so on. But one more important topic that's crisis communication I am going to cover in this session. Yes, we as managers need to understand that how to communicate during a crisis situation, which is actually an unwanted situation by any organization. So in this session, I am going to talk about crisis communication in detail. So by the end of this session, you all will be able to understand that why we need to have and what's the concept of crisis communication? Why the businesses these days, they have started talking about planning for crisis communication. Not just this, how you as a manager need to deal with your employees when it comes to a crisis situation. Because yes, there are going to be some different ways, different channels which you need to adopt for. Not just this, in fact, I am also going to focus upon the different categories of crisis communication as well as the type of responses which you will be getting, which you will be performing yourself or you will be giving under the crisis situation. And also, I am going to focus upon that how you need to prepare an effective crisis communication plan and what are the strategies which you should frame in order to have a sound proof crisis communication plan. Not just this, I am also going to highlight about the challenges which you, play, which you face at the workplace under the crisis situation and how to handle your stress. Yes, this is a stressful situation. You need to handle the stress also. So now let's begin by understanding that what we mean by a crisis. What is a crisis? Yes, a crisis is a circumstance or a situation that tends to threaten the important expectations of any organization and yes, it has the potential to affect the organizational performance as well as its outcomes, its future plans and so on. And when we talk about a crisis, it is a live issue, live issue, real issue. It's not a hypothetical situation we are talking about. We are talking about that, yes, you are stuck into an unwanted situation, which is going to impact your organization as a whole. The individuals working in the organization, the customers and different people associated with the organization. So that's why we call it as a live event. And when we talk about crisis, crisis can take up in different forms. Now, when I say different forms, yes, different forms can be in the form of either your organization is into some kind of scandal or uh, they are caught up with some kind of defective products which you might have circulated among the customers. So, like this, you might be coming across some kind of crisis. And as a manager, you need to understand 
that how to handle this crisis, how to communicate in this crisis situation. Because most of the time we feel ourselves more comfortable when the situation is in our favor and we tend to communicate in the most appropriate manner. But the moment we are put into a crisis situation, all our communication skills tend to vanish up. So you as a manager need to focus upon this aspect also. But how are you going to go for communication during the crisis situation? So before this, I just want to highlight that what we mean by crisis communication. Yes, crisis communication is more about the technologies, the systems, the protocols which an organization is going to use under the crisis situation to communicate either with their employees or their customers or their stakeholders and so on. So yes, crisis communication is more about how you are going to communicate as well as what are the channels which you will be using, adapting under the crisis situation. And when we talk about crisis communication, it is more about disseminating appropriate information at the right time to the people because already people are under a lot of chaos just because of the crisis now here people can be any it can be it can be linked with your employees or your customers or anyone and ultimately of course if your communication during the crisis situation is not strong enough then who is going to be impacted? As a whole organization, your performance is going to be impacted. It is at a threat because when you are under crisis situation, you are going through an unwanted, unplanned thing, unplanned situation and that too a life situation, that's not a hypothetical one. I am focusing this point again and again because it's a life situation, you need to understand the importance of crisis communication. Uh, yes, with this also we can say that crisis communication is more about a sub-speciality to the public relation tool or to the public relation profession. Yes, you can say that public relation is more about a big umbrella under which crisis communication is also one way of dealing with the people, maintaining relationships with the publics under the crisis situation. Now, when it is a crisis situation, yes, it becomes even more important to communicate with your publics. Remember, in the last session, I discussed about the publics. Now, publics, it can be your employees, your customers, your shareholders, your investors, the government, etc. So, when it is about a crisis situation, yes, it is a kind of public relation profession. It's a subspeciality into that because here also you need to maintain cordial relations that too under the crisis situation. That is what is more important, right? Because again, uh, when we talk about public relations, what you people were doing, you were trying to bring your reputation, you were trying to defend, you were trying to protect the organizational image. So crisis communication is also about this, wherein your ways are going to be, which are going to help in protecting, defending the image, the uh, reputation of your organization. And when we say about crisis communication, it becomes more about providing knowledge, information to the publics about that crisis. Because when the crisis used to happen, no one is having any kind of information. They are clueless. So just to make them more informative, the basic objective behind crisis communication becomes that it should provide appropriate and relevant knowledge to the employees and all the other stakeholders, right? If I talk about some kind of um, unexpected natural crisis situation, I'm not talking about that. But still, 
you can go on for strategizing the things, proactively thinking, having a long term orientation, long term focus, wherein you will be evaluating the things with a wide scope, with a wide arena. And you will be using your gut feeling, your intuition feeling, your judgments, which is again driven by your values, your beliefs, your principles. Again, when I say your beliefs, it's about the organizational beliefs, organizational values and so on. So that is more about the strategic response. So yes, many a times we need to go for tactical response as well as strategic response. Uh, again, when we talk in terms of strategic response, yes, we are planning ahead. That is what is proactive approach is all about, right? I hope you are able to understand this. Now moving on to the three basic stages of crisis management. As I said that it is going to help you in preventing uh, from spreading of misinformation. This is also very much connected with the uh, with uh, you can stop uh, panic among the people. Because what happens when there is a crisis, people come up with different stories, different information and that adds more to their anxiety level, to their stress level and makes them even more anxious. Might be crisis is not that much big, but uh, just because of the misinformation you tend to panic upon. You tend to get anxious, you are stressed. So if you are going to communicate with the publics during the crisis situation, trust me, they are not going to panic anymore. They'll understand the situation. With this, another important aspect, which most of the organizations tend to miss upon, is that uh, during the crisis communication, if you are, if as a top management, you are communicating properly with your employees, trust me, it's going to give you a lot of benefits. Because what happens in the organization many a times that some crisis occurs and top management, either they are keeping the information with them due to a number of reasons, they are not communicating with the employees. Even this makes the situation more worse. So if you are communicating during the crisis situation with your employees, trust me, it's going to bring them and help uh, in aligning the employees with the organizational set of plan to handle this crisis. Not just this, if you are communicating properly with the publics, with your customers in some crisis situation, it is going to earn you a lot of loyalty from your customers. If you really want to gain that loyalty, go and communicate with them during the crisis situation. Don't put a um, hindrance, right? There should be no hindrance. Most of the time what happens when there is a crisis situation, the companies, they'll say, we don't want to comment on anything. By this way, you are somewhere or the other ruining your customer's loyalty communicate with them, what was the problem, tell them why this happened, how it should be uh, recovered or where was the problem, uh, where was the actual problem, communicate with them, don't run away from them because the more you are going to run away from them, you are going to ruin their loyalty and you will not be able to earn their loyalty. Yes, uh, as I started with uh, this, that as uh, a company, or why you need to go on for crisis communication because it helps you in building trust and the more trust you will be able to build among your publics, you will be able to build your reputation. You'll be able to portray yourself as a positive organization. I just want to quote here an example of Tesla. Way back in 2013, if you remember, uh, there was one Model S which was more of the electric car and uh, due to some reason on highway, it, the car caught fire and there was a huge hue and cry here and there and people started raising the question mark against the reputation of Tesla's electric cars and sooner the shares were getting down 
people were into a lot of dilemma that we cannot go on for uh, believing that yes, this car is safe. Although at that time, a lot of people were into the process of uh, purchasing that car and so on. But now it was again a big, big crisis which company faced. But the moment this crisis happened, the company, their communication, crisis communication team, even the um, even Elon Musk, they came up in the front and they handled the queries of the customers. In fact, they uh, viral one video wherein it was being shown that it was not the mistake somewhere. In fact, it was a it was an electric engine, uh, uh, and just because of that, somewhere. Uh, the car was more safe, the passengers didn't get hurt. They converted the whole scenario into the other point of view wherein they focused upon the viability of the car and they say they portrayed that none of the passengers were being harmed. So that's what this car is all about. What would have been if they would have stopped communicating with the people? They would have harmed their company's reputation, but no, their communication team, crisis communication team came in the front and handled the queries and justified the reason that why the problem occurred and how their car is actually a good one. So see, this crisis again turned into the positive one. So this is why companies need to have crisis communication strategies. So, um, in this connection, I also want to raise one very, very important aspect that how to deal with employees. See, forget about dealing with the outside people. Most of the time companies uh, do mistake that they don't even communicate with their internal people. That's their employees. And just because of this reason, lot of assumptions, confusions, misstatements, under misunderstandings, they tend to crop up and out of this reason, employees of the organization, they either intentionally or unintentionally tend to misquote certain things, which again brings bad reputation to the organization. So always remember, you as top management of the company, first you need to deal with your employees, communicate with them. Why you need to communicate them? Why you need to address your employees? Because when we talk about addressing the employees, explain them the situation. Might be possible that your employees might have heard about the crisis from some ex uh, external sources. Rather than this situation that they are hearing it, they are getting it from the external sources, you should address your employees with the crisis. You should address your employees with the problem. Explain the situation to them. Convey the truth to them. Yes, I understand. When we say tell the truth or convey the truth to them, there are other implications also. But the positive one is the moment you will be bringing them into your confidence. They are the assets of the organization. Explain them that how their jobs and company reputation is linked. The moment you are going to explain all these things to them, they will be on your side because they are the employees of, of the organization. They are the part of the organization. And not just this, in fact, share your plan for handling that crisis situation with them. Make them accountable. Make them participate in that plan because the moment they are going to be the part of this plan, of this crisis communication plan, they are going to feel more responsible. They'll do each and every act with full responsibility, with full accountability. But if you are thinking that, oh, I need not to communicate properly to my employees, this is wrong. That's why organizations are going on the wrong track. So before, when we talk about crisis communicate, handling any crisis communication or hand handling any crisis situation, going for crisis communication, trust me, first gain the confidence of your employees. The moment your employees are on your side, 
you are going to win the battle because they are also the torch bearers for spreading the positive vibes from the organization. So always remember that first deal with your employees under the crisis situation. Forget about dealing with the external parties. First deal with your employees and then move ahead, right? So now uh, moving forward, I am going to focus upon different kind of type of crisis or different categories of crisis which uh, an organization can come across. The very first one is financial crisis. Now financial crisis can be uh, somewhere you are into huge debts, you are uh, having huge losses for the organization and you are in a crisis situation wherein you are not able to earn at least um, that um, no profit, no loss kind of situation and you are not able to pay salaries to your people, you are not able to pay uh, huge um, what we say other other amounts which are required by the external parties you are not able to pay that so that is what is more of the financial crisis where you are dealing with a financial crunch and somewhere you are not able to stabilize the finances of the organization so organization is into trouble because a lot of losses has taken place and or, or some kind of similar situation or you got, got into some scandal which was linked with the financial things only. Apart from this, there's another category that is what is personal crisis. Now what is personal crisis? When I say personal crisis, so somewhere or the other, some individual is being linked, right? We can say individual or group is being linked, right? Or some group you can say. Now how? For example, uh, some of the investors who has invested a lot of money, a lot of capital in your organization, that person tends to be involved in some unethical practice, some other scandal, which is actually not linked with your organization. But just because that individual or that group is associated with your organization and just because of this, your organization's reputation is at stake. So somewhere or the other, when we say personal crisis, it might be not due to financial things. It might be not due to some technological aspects, it might be that some of the individual who is associated with the organization is into some kind of personal scandal or some kind of issue. But just because that person is involved into some unethical practice, some unethical scandals kind of thing and he or she is associated with the organization. That's why your organization is facing a crisis situation now, right? So that is what is about personal crisis. Next in line is organizational crisis. What is an organizational crisis? Anything which you might come across. Yes, an organizational crisis is when um, or it arises out of when you supply some kind of wrong products, defective products are there in the market and it is bringing the fame to your organization. Due to some mistake, you were not able, you ended up coming up with defective series of product, defective series of some software or some, it can be anything, it can be any product, right? And uh, just because of that, the customers are again against you because they got the defective products from your organization. And trust me, when it is happening, um, it's again one of the most worst situation. And media tends to capture this like anything. So that is what is organizational crisis. Due to some kind of defective products which you might have sent in the market out of intentional reasons or unintentional reasons but again that's unintentional only none of the company wants to get into such kind of things right 
Apart from this, another crisis is about technological crisis. Now, many a times uh, an organization is into a situation wherein um, their whole, whole server is down due to which all the services which they used to provide are, is at halt. And now you need to deal with the customers, with the employees, linked with the different issues. So that is what is technological crisis. That again, that crisis, how it came just because of some interruptions in the technology in which your organization is dealing into due to which you are not able to provide continuous services to the stakeholders, to the public and that is the reason you are into the crisis. Right? Another category of crisis is natural crisis. Now, natural crisis is basically due to different types of natural calamities, right? Now, it has different levels as well, different subcategories. When we talk in context of natural crisis, the very first one is short term delays. Now, short term delay is uh, just because due to some natural calamity, your business is not fully shut, but yes, they have shut some of their services for their customers. Uh, for example, uh, like um, there is heavy snowfall is there and um, earlier you used to provide the home delivery for that particular product or whatsoever you are providing. But now you are providing the services, today also you are providing the services, but with a delayed timeline. Earlier you used to take only 24 hours, but now you might be taking 72 hours or more than that. So this is what is short term delays. Remember one thing that if you are dealing with this short term delays, as a company, as an organization, you should connect with your customers. If that kind of delay is happening, just communicate it to them well in advance so that they it is not bringing any uh, negative thing to the organization right so that is what is short term delay uh, not your whole business is shut down it is just a part or due to some xyz natural reason uh, you are you are now providing the services at a delayed time right so that is what is short delay it's not completely short now, uh, coming on to the long term closures. Now, long term closures like that, uh, for example, there was huge snowfall in your area, huge snowfall, due to which uh, the electricity got interrupted. Although that uh, snowfall went for only two days, but the damage which is being created by that snowfall is that for two weeks the electricity was shut and you were not able to conduct your business due to that reason. Although that particular thing happened only for two days, but the after effect of that is again a bit long and until and unless electricity is not going to resume, you cannot go on for starting your business with your publics, right? So in that situation, we call it as long term closures. Now, when you are going for such long term closures, again, communicate it to your customers that by what time, by what deadline you are going to get back to them so that they are comfortable because might be possible you are in some other area where snowfall was there and after effect was there, but the, your customer is such, sitting in such an area where there is no problem like this. They are very comfortable. They are not facing any such electricity issue or whatsoever. So do communicate, right? Not just this, apart from this, uh, natural crisis also talks about anticipated natural disaster. Now these days, yes, some of the natural calamities or na natural uh, disasters we can anticipate due to technology, thanks to technology. So if you are able to anticipate some of that disaster, 
uh, for example, if I say that hurricanes, right, hurricanes can be estimated, anticipated uh, and we can estimate, somewhat we can estimate that uh, how much time it will take to reach to coastline, right. So, you know that this calamity, this problem, this crisis is going to occur. So, in this situation, make sure that you are uh, quite empathetic towards your customer. If some kind of billing is requiring more of time, forget about that. That is going to build reputation between you and your company, right? So, that is what is anticipated natural disaster, but there are certain times unexpected natural disasters, which you cannot um, again measure on measure by some of the technology like earthquakes and all, right. And uh, again, when we talk about unexpected natural disaster, of course, that's going to hit your business a lot, right. And um, might be a kind of long, very, very, very long term closure or you need to relocate. Uh, so, again, try to be in communication with the people either through social media or whatsoever medium you can reach out to under that crisis situation also. Another natural crisis is about permanent climate change. Examples like uh, forest fire and your company, your organization was totally dependent on a source, on a resource from that particular forest only. Now, how you are going to handle this? There is a huge fire in the forest and people are uh, not able to do anything. So, in that case also do communicate with your stakeholders, right. So, these are some of the natural crisis categories. Again, you are going to be in either of the category. Apart from this, some other terminologies like work, workplace crisis, that violence, cri workplace violence crisis, that some violent situation happened at your workplace and just because of that, this crisis situation cropped up and so like this, but broadly we can categorize onto these categories of crisis, right. So now moving forward towards the types of responses to crisis. See, there are two types of responses. One is tactical response, one is strategic response. Tactical response is more about your reactive response, that some crisis situation is there and now you need to handle it. So yes, of course, the orientation is short term, the focus is narrow, somewhere I just want to sort this problem out. What is need to be the process to sort this out, right? So, we focus on more on the implementation of the solution which we have decided as per that situation. So, this is more about tactical response, immediate response that this is, this is in front of me, this is the life crisis situation. Now, this needs to be uh, sorted like this. So, what I am doing, I am giving a reaction to the crisis situation. But apart from that, these days, organizations are also having strategic response to the crisis situation, wherein they follow the proactive approach, wherein they tend to anticipate that what possible crisis situations they can get into. Again, uh, if I talk about some kind of um, unexpected natural crisis situation, I am not talking about that, but still. You can go on for strategizing the things, proactively thinking, having a long term orientation, long term focus wherein you will be evaluating the things with a wide scope, with a wide arena and you will be using your gut feeling, your intuition feeling, your judgments which is again driven by your values, your beliefs, your principles. Again, when I say your beliefs, it's about the organizational beliefs, organizational values and so on. So, that is more about the strategic response. So, yes, many a times we need to go for tactical response as well as strategic response. Uh, again, when we talk in terms of strategic response, yes, we are planning ahead. That is what is proactive approach is all about, right? I hope you are able to understand this. Now moving on to the three basic stages of crisis management. C 
crisis management yes there are three different stages pre crisis crisis and post crisis now when you manage as a manager how you need to manage a crisis situation so here when we talk about pre crisis or crisis or post crisis the very first stage is more about pre crisis what talks about monitoring risk that means you are having a proactive approach strategizing for potential crisis build a team and train them make them empathetic and credible select that particular team members who are more credible who holds credibility among the publics develop empathetic attitude although i am going to discuss about this in the five pillars as well so that is what is pre crisis situation during the crisis situation uh, try to collect as well as analyze that how this crisis is going to impact my organization what can be the possible ways by which i can bring my organization out of this try to disseminate appropriate information that is what is more required appropriate many a times what happens that during the crisis situation the top management they are going to disseminate irrelevant information which is either too much or too less so make sure that you are disseminating appropriate information to the people and then the post crisis is even more important analyze that how you manage the crisis were your efforts okay were your efforts good enough or if they were not then what you were lacking that you need to focus upon fine so this is again a three stage crisis mode crisis management model now moving further i am going to focus upon that how to build a crisis communication plan what that plan is all about how you are going to go on for building your strategies building your planning designing your plan designing that blueprint the very first thing is about thinking of a crisis management team now when i say crisis management team look for the credibility as i said earlier also develop empathy that team needs to be good at communication skills persuasive convincing networking they should have all such skills because that team is going to upfront and meet the publics so they need to have they need to nurture they need to inculcate all such skills which are very much required when it is about maintaining good human relations in the crisis situation and not just about the team specify the spokesperson might be possible your company is being headed by your ceo he is the he holds the topmost position in the organization but might be that he is not the right person to go and act as the spokesperson of the organization you need to select any person from board of directors or anyone as md or anyone else who can act as as, as a spokesperson who is having more credibility among the publics in comparison to the ceo of your organization so many a times company end up committing this mistake they believe that spokesperson again needs to be the higher authority topmost authority of the organization no not necessarily it can be it cannot be if you think that the person possess required skills to be a spokesperson because again when we say a spokesperson he has lot of responsibility on his shoulders he is the connecting link between the publics and the organization that spokesperson tends to represent 
the organization in front of the publics, right? So that is what you need to do. Uh, not just this, in fact, when we talk about crisis management plan, you can think of anticipating the plan. That is what is a proactive approach you can go for, proactive approach. Also in your plan, make sure that whatever crisis you are talking about, who are the stakeholders, who are the people who are going to be impacted by that crisis? Because every crisis has different implications. If it's a financial crisis, might be possible that financial crisis is not impacting the customers, but that's highly impacting the employees. So that is what you need to understand that who you need to identify that who and how to address the stakeholders. Apart from this, when we talk about crisis communication plan, you need to anticipate the requirements of the stakeholders. Yes. Because see, if you are going to be um, going with the requirements of your stakeholders during the crisis situation, you add more credib credibility to your basket. If you are coming up with your own plans from your own perception, that might not be sufficient. So try to anticipate that what your stakeholders require. So start questioning yourself that if you would have been that stakeholder, what you would have demanded or what you would have required in that situation. So from that, do this reverse thinking. The moment you are going to be into that reverse thinking cycle, you will be able to plan more effectively. Not just this, when we talk about crisis communication plan, also look for appropriate social media platforms, which you are going to take up in order to go on for communicating with the publics during the crisis situation, right? So that is more about a crisis communication plan. With this, I also want to highlight on the five crisis communication pillars, wherein we can say that crisis communication is actually based upon these five things. Very first thing is about keep it simple. Keep it simple. Why I'm saying keep it simple? Because what happens when you tend to come up with confused statements during the crisis communication part, then you make people more confused. So use simple language, use simple language, simple statistics, which can be understood by the people. Don't go on for some sophisticated language, some sophisticated uh, graphs or whatsoever you want to use for communicating the things to your people. Keep it very simple. The moment your language is going to be simple, the second pillar which talks about is add credibility to your message. Now how you can add this? Credibility is not something that you will bring and add it. No. How you are going to add this? Now bring such people on the board in the team of crisis communication who holds credibility, who have good credibility, good reputation among the publics. So make that thing very sure. The team members, the spokesperson, whosoever is into that team, they hold credibility and they are able to transfer that credibility also. And they are able to represent from them the credibility of the organization. Not just this, the third pillar which talks about, which I was focusing earlier also, that you need to be empathetic as a team member. So empathize, empathize with them. What we mean by being empathetic? Putting yourself or thinking yourself from the other person's point of view or putting yourself in the other person's shoes. So think from their point of view, from the point of view of the publics, that if they are into this crisis situation, and if they are thinking in this manner, is it correct? If not, why? If yes, why? What else they can demand for? What else they can think for? So that is what is that you need to empathize. And uh, fine, credibility is there. You are coming up with a simple message. Uh, you are also empathizing with them. But another important pillar talks about showing your competency. 
see what happens that many a time the companies they are not able to portray and tell and communicate people that see we are competent enough to handle this crisis we can manage this crisis and for that your confidence is required and your confidence how it can be communicated through the crisis communication only so make yourself that people are taking you as competent organizations who have the capability to handle this crisis situation even in the most worst phase they can handle this apart from this share your story yes if you are out of that crisis share this story so that you can make other people also learn and you can also learn from your past mistakes don't just forget at that point of time only no share your story so these are some of the five uh, pillars which are very very important for a sound crisis, uh, crisis communication right so now i will be talking and focusing on 12 strategies which you can use which you can inculcate in your organization in yourself for handling crisis communication as i have already explained you that you need to have a crisis communication plan and for that plan you need to have good spokesperson you need to have a good team wherein those team members they can be uh, they should be empathetic they should be confident they should be uh, having good communication skills good persuasive skills so that they can bring uh, or they can turn up a crisis situation into a good one into a, the non crisis situation right not just this not only the selecting also the training of the people is very much required train them train them in advance don't wait for the crisis to take place and then you will think of oh i need to plan for a i need to uh, plan for a communication crisis communication team no plan strategically prepare them train them give them training at how they should communicate during a uh, crisis what kind of different channels tools they should go on for it should not come accidentally no apart from this i also want to focus upon one very important aspect that analyze the gap between feeling ready and being ready there these are two different things see research says that somewhere around 70 to 75% of the top managers or the employers believe they feel that their team is ready for handling crisis what i said that around 70 to 75% of the employers they believe they feel they feel that their team is ready to handle crisis whereas in actual around uh, 45 to 48% something like that employers believe that in terms only 47% of the time their teams are actually ready so there is a gap between feeling ready and being actually ready that's the difference that you really need to take upon that either you are just feeling that you are ready or you are actually ready for that particular crisis right also try to bring the board members on the team board members on the board what happens most of the time the board members half of the board members they are not even bothered about that no bring all the board members on the board to handle this crisis crisis situation understand audience as i said that you should be empathetic enough so that you can plan the crisis situation as per their ways not just this in fact you can also you should rather also focus upon providing relevant information as i said neither too less nor too much whatever is relevant just communicate just pass on that information to the people who are involved in that or hit by that crisis another strategy which you should focus upon two way communication what happens most of the time we understand the audience from our perspective right i am going to disseminate information from my perspective as an employer but i am going to forget that might be my perspective is wrong 
I was not able to empathize as the way they your people are thinking. So in that case, make sure that it is a two way communication develop such channels wherein you are communicating with the publics about the crisis and at the same time you are also getting the feedback from the publics. So that you can anticipate you can plan in the most good manner without any flaws. Also choose correct communication channels most of the time we end up uh, choosing wrong channels for communication during the crisis. For example, if uh, some crisis happened and uh, we need to communicate with our publics and the publics with whom we want to communicate they are more comfortable with the social media but that to um, online portals but what we are doing we are communicating through print media what is the point. So, make sure that whatever communication channels you are selecting that needs to be effective that needs to be correct one. Also make sure that you should give special attention to the remote public because most of the time when we design crisis communication plans we focus on the major aspect major part of the public but we tend to folk, uh, forget about the remote public do not do that they are equally important to you. So, focus upon that check for the accuracy of message and last but not the least one do post crisis analysis which is going to help you in handling and managing the future crisis situation in your organization. So, these are the 12 strategies which I suggest that you should focus upon and definitely you are going to come up with a with an effective crisis communication strategy. Now, um, with this I also want to quickly focus upon the challenges uh, which you face at workplace during the crisis although yes so sooner somewhat we have discussed like that too much or too little kind of information when it is being shared it is again a challenge there is no two way communication there is no contact data there lack of visibility transparency I am not able to see that also many a times it is a challenge that we are not able to have a strong leader who can bind all the people of the organization and can stood against the crisis situation that is what we tend to miss upon sometimes. So, that is again a big challenge if you are going to have strong leadership in your organization trust me you will be able to handle and come out of that crisis situation in the most credible manner in the most effective manner. So, make sure you inculcate you nurture strong leaders in your organization apart from this as few minutes back only I suggested that certain times we end up having irrelevant communication channels which is again a challenge for the organization during the crisis situation because again we are under lot of pressure lot of stress and we end up taking up the help of wrong communication channels which we need to take care not just this again the inappropriate content that is what we should share with the people that becomes a challenge because again I will quote this that uh, out of some stress or pressure situations we are uh, anxious we are worried and we end up sharing or having wrong or inappropriate content of the information. So, this is again a challenge which we need to focus upon and towards the end there is one more challenge wherein we need to stay connected with the team very much important very very much important our team should not feel like as if they are left all alone right. So, these are some of the challenges which we face at the workplace during uh, crisis situations if we are able to follow those strategies which I just discussed previous to this discussion for sure we will be able to overcome these challenges. Towards the end I just want to tell you that how to manage stress and anxiety during the crisis situation. So, always be ready to help any of your colleague in the organization during the crisis situation be helpful be kind enough to offer your help 
try to look at the brighter side undoubtedly you are surrounded with with the negative thoughts but uh, make sure that you are trying to look at the positive side of that also inculcate try to work in teams rather than working in individual aspects under the crisis situation because the moment you are surrounded by your team members you feel more motivated or and the moment you are getting to be motivated there your team is there to motivate you so work in teams when under crisis not just this in fact take small breaks take small breaks don't work on stretch under the crisis situation i understand that uh, you tend to work for long hours you end up working long hours more working hours right as per the um, normal situations but take small breaks to energize you otherwise you will be drained appreciate the efforts of your team the hard work of your team as a top manager as a employer keep appreciating appreciating might be they are not able to take very big steps in the success ladder but celebrate small wins as well during the crisis situation it tends to energize them it tends to motivate them do hear your employees don't make them as if they are left all alone no give your ear to them that's very important that is again one strategy wherein you can um, make sure that you they are stress free also adapt step by step approach don't just jump into the last step do not panic stay calm things are going to be fine that is what you need to do so dear learners these are some of the strategies which i discuss and i hope you are able to understand in this session the concept of crisis communication why companies need crisis communication the different categories your responses how to deal with the employees the strategies how you can build strong and sound communication plans how to handle the stress when you are in crisis so i hope you enjoyed the session you learned a lot from this session and you will be able to manage crisis situation at your workplace in the most effective and efficient manner thank you and happy learning